to There Is a Method to the Madness. I am Rob Maxwell, and I am your host and podcast producer. The Method to the Madness is a podcast about physical fitness and wellness. I created this podcast to go over what works, and most importantly, why it may work, and what may not work, and why. Hence the name Method to the Madness. Today's podcast topic is the principle of periodization. All right, but before I get into that, let me thank our sponsors, Jonathan and Lynn Gilden at the Gilden Group Realty Pros. They currently have over 100 million in sales between the two of them. They work hard, they hustle, and I purchase personally, not purchasely, personally vouch for them. They can be reached at 386 451 2412 and thegildengroup.com. I will post their information in the show notes. All right, so the old principle of periodization. Number four on our fun checklist. Yesterday I covered the principle of progression and today periodization. Okay, let me tell you a cool, funny, little ironic story about that. So periodization was like the baby doll in exercise physiology about 20 years ago. Like it became the thing that strength and conditioning coaches, mostly strength and conditioning coaches versus personal trainers, just really grabbed a hold of and got so excited about. And, you know, there's some reason as to why that was the case, but it just was like really, really huge. You know, if you're not in my field, if you don't work in my field, it may be really hard for you to grasp and go, okay, well, you know, it doesn't sound very exciting, you know, and the reality is it probably isn't overly exciting, but it was the thing that everybody was talking about. And what it really is, it's a way to structure a workout. So periodize the workout so you start with like lower intensity higher volume and build it into higher intensity less volume type of thing so it's like workout programming and there's absolutely a reason to use it and in the method to the madness today I'm gonna tell you the method to the madness as to what is important in how it might get overblown a little bit. So in other words, what you really need to know about it. But my funny story is this. So like 20 years ago, this is all a rage. In some ways it kind of still is, but it's maybe settled down a little bit. So I went to Tampa and I live here in Daytona Beach area. So it was like a two and a half hour drive or so to go see Dr. Stephen Fleck talk about periodization. It was good to get some CEC hours continuing ed stuff. And again, I, I wanted to learn more about this phenomenon that was going on that um, many people were saying was the reason 20, 30 years ago we weren't beating the Germans and Russians in training because they were using periodization and we were not, all this kind of stuff. It's like, oh, wow, okay, so let me look more into this. So I went and saw one of the, the founders of it himself. Dr. Fleck. The other one is Dr. Kramer. So together they really put together the periodization model. So I wanted to, you know, hear it from the horse's mouth, so to say. Now, what was very funny was we sit down and he gives us our PowerPoint handouts and all that stuff, which you know was was cool and he was very nice and very good and very smart. And um, he almost like took the wind out of the sails for the entire workshop, like within the first 10 minutes when he goes, okay, okay, let me cut to the chase here. You know, you trainers are like taking this way too serious. Like the only thing you have to remember it with periodization is change. We're like, oh, hmm. He's like all these models out there that are supposed to be so perfect and increase this way and increase that way. and do this this day and do that that day and you know how to make these bell curves and all this and he's like just remember to change things around 
in an orderly manner. I'm like, oh, okay then. So anyway, that was kind of funny and it put perspective on it how like one of the people who actually wrote it can kind of bring it down to right size and a lot of people who try to follow these things end up taking them more like literal than they are. I wouldn't say serious because all these, all these principles are serious and they're all very, very helpful. So it's not that they're not serious, it's that sometimes we take them too literal. It's you know way too literal and way too programmed and way too anal about it when in reality Dr. Fleck was saying what we need to do is think about like how to change things up in a nice orderly manner. Now let me give you just a little bit of history and science on this. So there's essentially three types of periodization. All right. There's what we call linear and linear periodization is what a lot of the strength coaches use in high level collegiate sports and professional sports. And linear basically has one big macro cycle and that might be the whole season of training. And a macro cycle can be anywhere from six months to a year and even four years when you're dealing with Olympic athletes who need to pink peak at a certain week. So that's a lot of advanced planning, okay? So normally though, take the Olympics out of it, it's six months to a year of a giant macro cycle where everything is planned down to the individual workout a year in advance. That sounds pretty heavy, right? And then you have what is called a meso cycle. The mesocycle takes a segment of training and it can really be anywhere from one month to like three or four months depending on the, the plan again. So, and that's where you're working on something specific within that macro cycle. So for example, let's take the strength training world where you have different things, different modalities you're trying to train for. So it could be say strength, could be power, could be endurance, could be hypertrophy. So in a four month macro cycle, so to say, each mesocycle one month long would focus on one of those things. So the mesocycle might work on hypertrophy, which is size. And then it would go up in intensity to the next mesocycle, which would be strength, because you use greater load for strength than you do for hypertrophy. So that's an, a linear increase in that direction. So that would be an example of using different mesocycles. Okay, so we're at two cycles so far, macro, meso. The third and final cycle would be the micro cycle. And the micro cycle is basically the individual weeks broken down. So that's what you might see more when you see like a weekly workout listed or your trainer or you see our charts those are like micro cycles of the individual workout so the micro cycles build into meso cycles which build into macro cycles if you do the linear type of periodization which is really only kind of effective for working with mass sports teams and i used to explain this to my students so what are the pros and cons? The pros are you have everything mapped out and most importantly you have them mapped out for a group of individuals. So it's not very individualized. You know, it's more like all the running backs, all the wide receivers, whatever. So it's mapped out. It kind of makes your job easier as a strength coach because you know, part of your job is monitoring a lot of people. And it's a lot easier to monitor if you have a workout, say, on the board that everybody is doing. So that's the pros of it. Um, you know, also mapping it out is good. The cons are, what if somebody gets hurt and they fall off the mesocycle? In other words, they're at a different place in training. Well, we have to figure out then where they fit into all this. And also because it's not very individualized and because you don't know exactly how people are progressing, you're not really quite sure if you're actually on the right track or not. So it's got its pros and cons. Overall, I'm not a huge fan of it. All right. So the next type of periodization is what is called nonlinear or 
undulating. So nonlinear or undulating periodization means that you're making all of the changes, because remember, periodization means change, you are making them within a week's time, okay? So if you're gonna train, again, looking at strength, if you're gonna train for endurance, hypertrophy, and strength, which are kind of the same, but slightly different in their own way, you're going to do them all during the week, but at different points during the week, okay? So for example, Monday might be a light day where you're using lower weight and higher reps. Wednesday might be a medium day or hypertrophy day where you're doing moderate weight, moderate reps. Friday might be a heavy day where you're using high loads and low reps. So that would be um, non-linear undulating periodization. You're making all the necessary changes within a week. So it's not quite as mapped out as the macro cycle. It's a little bit different in that. So it's still um, periodization, but it's not quite as mapped out. Um, pros and cons of it. So I definitely like it better. I think for the person who likes a lot of variety, it's a great thing. Um, you know, we, we all, I think, tend to get a little bit bored when we train, so it's good to have that variety in there. The cons are it's not as mapped out, so you can't necessarily peak as easily on paper at a certain time, but that gets a little bit overrated too. I mean, if you're listening to your body, you can still peak at the right time, but it, it's a form of periodization for sure. It just makes sure that there is necessary change in there, okay? So that is nonlinear undulating periodization, okay, in technical terms. Finally, there is unstructured nonlinear periodization. And that basically means that each time the person works out, they do something different. They change it up, mix it up, and do something different. You might think, well, geez, that sounds like what my instructor does all the time. And, you know, that may be the case, or it may be there's a method to the madness in your But it's definitely a form of periodization when there is change, changing it up. Now, I will say, like, if there's not any thought to the change, I mean, is that really periodization or is it chaos? Like, are they changing it up or are you changing it up just because your friends do or are you changing it up because you, you felt stale and you're still going to stay in line with what you think is most important you know um, for example let's say you're a bodybuilder trying to get bigger so you don't exactly want to do the same thing all the time but you don't want to train with super heavy weights like a power lifter because your goal isn't like maximum strength you want to gain size but every so every time you work out you're going to do a different bodybuilding type of workout well then that would be non-structured non-linear periodization and that would make sense and be good but if you like show up to the gym and you just start doing something completely off the path like you just start doing um burpees and tire flips or something because that's the popular thing to do i wouldn't call that non-structured non-linear periodization i would call that chaos and yes sure you're working out and that's probably better than not most likely but you're not really sticking to any form of a plan so you know there there's a there's a difference there and you have to find that difference between the two all right so what does the research say the research says that all periodization is better than keeping things constant. That's what the research says. And they didn't have a better outcome for any of the three, which I found interesting. I kind of thought that non-linear but structured periodization was going to win out in the studies. You know, doesn't that make the most sense that it would but that's not what it said. It said it was all the same. That like even versus the non-structured, non-linear periodization, there was results equal to the linear and equal to the non-linear but structured. 
So it was like, okay, then there you go, people. There's your answer. All periodization is eff efficient and effective and better than just doing the same thing all the time. But I warn you to make sure that you still follow what you need. Like we mix it up a lot, especially for some of our younger folks that come in the evening and afternoon. That just tends to be when they come. It's almost like the kids hour, you know, and they're 19 to 30 or so. They're young and, um, you know, they're different attention spans, of course. So we do a lot of different things, but there's always a method to the madness to it. Like one of them is just geared better with metabolic workouts. So they do different forms of metabolic workouts, which essentially is high rep, fast moving and cardio sets in between. They tend to do best with that, but every time they come in, they do something different with that. Another one is like really into getting stronger. So we do different forms of pyramid training with heavier loads and lower reps and more compound movements. Might not be the same thing every time, but we do those kind of workouts. I don't flip it and do like a strength workout like that with the person who likes the metabolic because they wouldn't do very well at all. And I don't take the strength guy and make him do the metabolic workout because he wouldn't be happy at all and he would throw up and he wouldn't feel like he did anything effective at the gym. And then there's others, but those are just the good examples um, of how, like with the kids, we do a lot of switching things up. We have a rehab guy who has transferred from rehab now back to general strength. So he's training more in the lines of the guy who wants to get stronger. So when he'll come in, sometimes he'll do a Smith squat, sometimes he'll do a goblet squat. So that's all non-structured, non-linear periodization but there's a method to the madness. We're thinking about what's the adaptation they're trying to accomplish. So as long as you are thinking about the adaptation you're trying to accomplish and you're changing things up, it's gonna be very effective. I hope that makes sense to you. So you don't just start doing what somebody did on Instagram because it looked fun, not if you have serious goals and you're trying to accomplish something, but you may switch it up as simple as switching up the exercises you choose is a great way to practice periodization. So instead of doing goblet squats, you start doing Smith squats. Or instead of doing Smith squats, maybe you start doing leg presses. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Instead of doing, say, chest press, you move to push up. Or maybe you do some push up, some chest press. So there's a lot of ways to switch it up. You're still looking for the same adaptation but you're switching the exercises that's usually the best way to use non-structured non-linear periodization okay so basically the the reason why all this works is because your body does seek out change it wants to adapt but it also wants to be stimulated in different varieties of ways which is where periodization comes in and makes it very effective all right that was pretty fun. Tune in tomorrow and I'm going to get into the principle of recuperation. Until next time, be max fit and be max well.